Have you ever wanted to be able to see into the future? Over the years and even to this day, there are plenty of people who claim to have these supernatural skills. Do you happen to remember the popular television psychic from the 90s, Miss Cleo? She was only one of hundreds of people claiming to have this talent. But what would your reaction be if instead of using tarot cards or reading the stars, someone used his knowledge to predict the outcome of events years into the future? Well, as it turns out, this exact thing may have happened before, and the stories behind the people who made these predictions are all the more interesting. From predicting space travel nearly 100 years prior to a shockingly accurate depiction of the sinking of the Titanic, here are five people who predicted the future and were right. One of the most popular authors in history was Jules Verne. He wrote some of the most well-known books during the 19th century, including 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Around the World in 80 Days, and Journey to the Center of the Earth. As you can tell, his main genre was science fiction, and he did it well. For anyone who follows the science fiction genre, though, they know that science fiction is usually the precursor to science fact. That was the case when Verne wrote the book From the Earth to the Moon. In this book, which was published in 1865, Jules Verne talked about a three-man crew who launched themselves to the moon by way of a gun-fired projectile. Of course, that being over a hundred years before the actual moon landing, technology wasn't nearly as advanced. Could he have really predicted so many things? Well, let's go back and take a look at the various similarities. In this book, the dimensions of the projectile he described was very similar to the dimensions of the Apollo 1 capsule. Verne named the cannon that shot the projectile the Columbiad, while the command module for the American mission was called Columbia. Jules Verne also shot his projectile off from Florida, which, as we all know, is where every space mission has been launched to date. Finally, the missions in the book end with the capsule falling back down into the sea, which is exactly what all of the Apollo spacecraft did as well. Although it could be argued that NASA could have taken some ideas or inspiration from Verne, it seems rather unlikely. But what do you think? Let us know in the comments. The name John Watkins Jr. may not mean too much to you in this day and age, but back in the early 1900s, he was one of the most popular writers alive. He originally worked as a railroad engineer, but soon took his expertise into the field of writing and started coming up with various futuristic concepts that he described in articles such as his most famous What May Happen in the Next Hundred Years. What has caught the attention of many is that some of his predictions were eerily accurate. One thing he is said to have predicted is satellite photography. In his article, he wrote these words, Balloons and flying machines will carry telescopes of 100-mile vision with camera attachments photographing an enemy within that radius. These photographs as distinct and large as if taken from across the street. Now here's something very important to remember about the time in which this was written. Black and white photography was very popular. However, it was still in its infancy and nowhere near capable enough of zooming in hundreds of times closer to get clear pictures. Additionally, the idea of putting a camera hundreds of miles into the air with the purpose of spying on enemies was unheard of. Perhaps it was his ideas that gave light to military analysts and engineers many decades later. Satellite photography was one of many predictions Watkins made that came true. Some others were digital color photography, mobile phones, pre-made meals, and the television, just to name a few. It's worth mentioning that dozens of other predictions he made did not come true. So maybe he was just taking shots in the dark. One of the most brilliant inventors in history was definitely Nikola Tesla. At the time, many of his inventions did not get the credit they deserved thanks to Thomas Edison. However, many years later, his principles and methods have gained tons of traction and are being applied to various fields of science. Along with his brilliant theories came the implications that he believed would have a huge effect on future generations. One of his most famous predictions came in 1926 when he described something that sounded eerily similar to a smartphone. 
We shall be able to communicate with one another instantly, irrespective of distance. Not only this, but through television and telephony, we shall see and hear one another as perfectly as though we were face to face, despite intervening distances of thousands of miles. And the instruments through which we shall be able to do this will be amazingly simple compared with our present telephone. A man will be able to carry one in his vest pocket. Not only did Tesla tell us that people will be able to instantly speak to each other from thousands of miles away, not only did he say that we could talk face to face with each other from thousands of miles away, the devices that would allow all of this would be on something that could fit in our vest pockets. That is exactly what we have today in the form of smartphones. Tesla is also thought to have made other predictions that came true. Some notable ones are Wi-Fi, artificial intelligence, robots, and even autonomous vehicles. Many of us have never heard of Morgan Robertson. He was born only a few years after the Civil War in Oswego, New Jersey. From an early age, he was all about the sea, even joining the Merchant Marines from 1877 to 1886, rising to the rank of first mate. As he settled down in life, though, he put pen to paper and started writing for popular magazines such as McClure's and the Saturday Evening Post. In 1898, Robertson wrote a 69-page novella called Futility. In it, he wrote of a massive British passenger ocean liner named the SS Titan. The Titan was rumored to be unsinkable. Additionally, Robertson wrote that the massive ship did not carry enough lifeboats for all the passengers aboard. On an Atlantic crossing in the month of April, it struck a huge iceberg and sank in the North Atlantic. Nearly everyone on board ended up dying. It was published roughly 14 years before the sinking of the actual Titanic. The fictional Titan was moving at 25 knots and struck an iceberg on a night in April at midnight, 400 nautical miles from the coast of Newfoundland. The real Titanic was moving at 22.5 knots, struck an iceberg on April 14, 1912 at 11.40 p.m., 400 miles from the coast of Newfoundland. The Titan measured 800 feet long. The Titanic measured 882. Both ships struck the iceberg on their starboard sides and were also both described as unsinkable. There is some debate to the credibility of these claims, but if they are true, as many say they are, then this was without a doubt one of the most stunningly accurate predictions of the future I believe the world has ever seen. There is a very scary part of history that tells of one of our most beloved presidents, Abraham Lincoln, supposedly predicting his own death. We use the word supposedly because the story is not 100% verified. However, it is an account taken by a man named Ward Hill Lemon, who was Lincoln's former law partner, friend, bodyguard, and a man who was not given to embellishment of facts. As it was told nearly 20 years after Lincoln's death, the president had shared details of a dream he had with Lemon. In it, he was walking into the East Room of the White House to find a corpse that was covered with a sheet and guarded by soldiers. Surrounding it was a crowd of people mourning. When Lincoln asked one of the soldiers who had died, the soldier replied, The president. He was killed by an assassin. It was discovered some time later that Lincoln supposedly insisted to Lemon that the body on display was not his own. Therefore, he paid it little mind. However, there are many other accounts showing that President Lincoln was very interested in dreams and their possible meanings. Whether or not he was thinking that his dream could have been a foreshadowing of his own assassination, it's clear that Lemon and Mrs. Lincoln believed so. However, it does seem quite strange that neither Lemon nor Mary Lincoln mentioned the dream until long after the president's assassination. Are these actual foretellings? Is it possible that these people were smart enough in their own fields to see where technology would take us one day? Who knows? Maybe the brilliant minds of today used what was written and predicted as a starting point to develop what we now have today. It really makes you think about what would have happened if these predictions were not made. Is it possible that some of them would not have happened? We'll never know. 
What is for sure, though, is that the connection between what was predicted and what came to pass is undeniable and spooky. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more just like it, be sure to click the link on screen now. Trust me, you won't want to miss it. With that, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.